Good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am your host, Krista Burns, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Uh, Encompass Live is the Commission's weekly online event where we cover anything that may be of interest to librarians um, across the state of Nebraska and across the country. We are The show is free and open to anyone to watch our live show and our recordings. Um, we do these sessions live on Wednesday mornings, um, every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time, and they are recorded, so if you want, if you're unable to join us on Wednesday mornings, that's fine. You can always come back to our website and watch all of our recordings um, that are posted up there from all of our previous shows. Uh, we do a mixture of things here, um, presentations, training sessions, interviews, book reviews, um, basically anything library related, we want to share it and have it on the show. Um, we have commission staff, Nebraska Library Commission staff, that sometimes present, and we have guest speakers. And this morning, we have a mixture of that. Um, next to me is uh, Laura Johnson, who is the Continuing Education Coordinator here Hi. at the Nebraska Library Commission. And um, on the line with us, we've got um, three or four, depends on how it works, <laughs> uh, guest speakers from libraries across the state. Um, this morning, we're going to be talking about the ARSL Conference, the Association for Rural and Small Libraries Conference that was here in Nebraska, up in Omaha, um, at the end of last month, end of September. And um, we're going to talk about some people that attended and um, grant scholarship. And I'll just hand it over to you, Laura, to explain about what we've got, who we've got on the line here with us okay. and why. Last year... Uh, when we heard that the Association for Rural and Small Libraries was going to have their conference in the area, and then it was going to be in Omaha, we were so excited. Um, this is an association that is so um, right on for so many of our libraries in Nebraska. And uh, here's a national conference in our own backyard, so to speak. So we gathered up um, our little pot of continuing education monies that we usually have every year um, to make small grants to people to go to conferences or to do some kind of continuing education project. And we said we were going to dedicate it all to sending people to the Association for Rural and Small Libraries Conference. Um, we were able to give 43 grants that's awesome. Um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, and we got um, a whole lot of Nebraskans to the ARSL conference. Um, for many of them, it was their first time at a national conference. And we thought maybe uh, it would be interesting to hear um, what their take on their experience was. So that's where we are. Um, and I think our first okay. person up to talk is Abby, right? Yes, let me get it here. Um, Yes, on the line we have Abby Yellman, who's from um, Scott's Bluff. Yes. Yeah, if you want to bring up her, her you probably... Hi, everyone. How are you? Hi, Abby. Yeah, you're unmuted, Abby. Hi. Go ahead. Hi. <laughs> there. Scott's Bluff um, website. All right. Well, I just want to thank you guys, um, first of all, for including me today. Um, being awarded the Nebraska Library Commission Continuing Education and Training Grant, to attend the ARSL conference in Omaha was amazing for me. Um, I'm pretty new back to Nebraska. i um, only been here in Scott's Bluff about a year and a half. And being located out here in the Panhandle kind of makes travel to Omaha and Lincoln um, difficult time-wise, but also financially it's hard to get out there because you know you're going to have to stay in a hotel and pay for the conference and all of that. So I was very appreciative to receive the grant um, to attend. And the ARSL conference allowed me, you know, it was really neat to be able to go to a national conference in Omaha, I mean, which is not a bad drive, seven hours to get there, but it was great to be exposed to a lot of different librarians from all over the nation. Um, I really met a really nice group from Louisiana, you know, people that I wouldn't normally get to sit and chat with and talk about ideas for your libraries and all those different kinds of things. Um, the sessions were really good. I mean, I went to... Uh, really good ones on fundraising and financial sustainability, which is the financial sustainability, I think, for any library is important right now. So any ideas we can get from that was great. And also, they were from Colorado, which was kind of ironic because they're not that far away. <laughs> um, I also went to building uh, library awareness with Geek the Library campaign, which was great, um, a weeding session that was really good, and then also the technology sessions that were really great. The sessions, you know, sometimes they reinforced what you're already doing, 
but it also, there was things that were provided that gave us some new ideas and strategies to bring back and modify and try here in Scott's Bluff. Um, Honestly, the most enjoyable part of the conference for me was the authors. I thought Joe Starita and Craig Johnson were amazing speakers. Um, mm -hmm. Joe is definitely a more academic research type of author, but I really enjoyed his, his speaking. He was engaging still. Sometimes when they're really academics, they kind of can talk too high for me. You know, I'm not very smart sometimes. But literally, he, he was very engaging and enjoyable. Um, Craig Johnson, he was amazing. He's more my kind of guy, really relatable. Um, great author, but I also really enjoyed the fact that I got to talk with him and Judy, his wife, and talk about the possibility of them maybe coming to Scott's Bluff. Um, they had been here a couple years ago, and I wasn't here yet, so I was really excited to talk to him about the possibility of him coming back maybe next spring. Um, again, an opportunity that I wouldn't have had to network with him without the grant money from the commission and also the attendance to the conference. So again, I just want to thank everybody at the Nebraska Library Commission. I know Laura's answered a bunch of questions for me <laughs> regarding the grant, but really the process was simple, straightforward, easy to apply, easy to follow. The guidelines were clear. Um, and again, without this grant, I probably would not have been able to go this year. So I appreciate it. Well, we're glad you came. Thank you, Abby. Thank you very much. Uh, was there any particular session that really uh, stood out for you or um, anything that you would say to people who were thinking about going to the ARSL conference next year? You know, honestly, the one that stood out the most for me, and I'm not sure that I, it was kind of a split session where some of it didn't apply in regards to the financial fundraising part because the Scottsbluff Library just was redone. But the financial st sustainability, um, I talked to Paul quite a bit. He had presented it. He's from Colorado. Mm -hmm. um, I talked to him quite a bit. I ran into him a, a couple of sessions later and got to speak to him about sustainability and just endowments and things like that. I mean, I thought that was really, really interesting because it's people that have gone through it. You're getting their experience of what they've done and then yeah. how we can maybe use some of that experience and use it for Scott's Bluff to sustain what we're doing here. So that one was really great for me. Good. Um, I did want to show people, we're at the ARSL uh, website here, that so many of the uh, sessions had handouts and they are available online. So, you know, it's, it's useful that you can get some of the materials that were covered later. See, I mean, a lot of people put their handouts online, so it's really Yeah, though nice. the conference people were very good about, I spoke as well, about contacting us as presenters and saying, yeah. you can get them to us ahead of time, we'll put them up there, or even if you have to wait till afterwards, we'll keep putting things up as they are sent um, from people, from the presenters. So um, if there's some that aren't up there yet, they may just not have gotten them yeah. yet. They could be on their way. <laughs> well, thank you, Abby. Um, did you have anything else that you wanted to include? I know that you had another meeting that you had to get to this morning yet, too. Yes, we also we have an agenda review for our city council meeting. But I just, again, wanted to thank you guys for allowing me to go, um, providing the grant. And I know you do a lot of hard work down there at the NLC. So we appreciate you, especially out here in the panhandle. So thanks again for everything you do. Well, thank you. That's great. Thanks. Thanks for being on with us yes. this morning. Yeah. Okay. And now we're going to go to we try Cindy. We're going to try Cindy. She was having a little trouble with her mm -hmm. um, audio. So can we can we get Cindy? Are you there? I've unmuted you. I am. I'm yeah. very thankful Hi. that I finally got it connected. I don't know what the problem was. <laughs> That's okay. You're good to go now. <laughs> Thank goodness, because I hated to miss this. I'm sorry I missed the Scott's Bless presentation a little bit, but uh, it sounded like she had a good time. So how, how was your experience at ARSL? Was this your first national conference? This was my first conference period. Um, oh. Having just taken over the library about a year and a half ago, I am new to all of this. So I have a different experience to where everything was new. I was disappointed I couldn't attend every single session <laughs> because I think all of them would have made wonderful points for us. Um, being a community that's less than 600 people, you know, I picked a few things that I thought were more important just to our patrons that are uh -huh. using the library in the last year and a half. Um, I went to the uh, first 
pre-conference with, uh, I believe her name was Heather Woody, um, Inspired for Greatness, and she was a wonderful, wonderful, I won't know, I don't even know if I want to call her a, a speaker, but a wonderful coach. Um, you know, her big thing was, why not now? Um, and one of the quotes she gave out there was, you cannot steer a parked car. So why are you sitting doing nothing and when you could be doing something? Mm -hmm. I really enjoyed her quite a bit. So she inspired me to come back and just, you know, get those ideas out there. I mean, the only thing they can do is shoot you down. I can say the same thing is it was a few, uh, I can't remember if it was, I think the second day in, I went to, um, oh, and you'll have to forgive me. Her name was Andrea Bretzler. Is that mm -hmm. right? Yeah, I believe so. And, yeah, and I think it was called The Future Is Now. And I mm -hmm. enjoyed her as well. She really did a lot of, in, uh, I guess I'd say, inspirational speaking and encouragement and coaching on how to really like approach your library board when they're kind of lackadaisical and you'd like to get them more involved. Um, afterwards, she took the time to talk to us and had a lot of great advice for us. So I really appreciated her quite a bit, too. Um, I think the other one I went to was Dazzling Displays on a Dime. You know, being a very small library, it's very important that we stay within our small budget. And uh, mm -hmm. Leah Croats, is that right? Uh, had a fantastic um, presentation yeah, on how to make your own posters um, using Publisher. Now this is something I don't know anything about, so I am looking forward to trying to figure all that out. <laughs> um, you know, something as simple as keeping your shelves nice and neat. I really thought, you know, that's so true. Don't overcrowd. Um, keep things a little uncluttered. People don't want to come in and look at your workstation and just see things everywhere. They'd like to come in and have something catch their eye. Um, one thing she said that I thought was really neat, um, as you know, we're working toward a new library, and this is something I hope to use. In the present library, our shelving goes to the ceiling. There are no display areas. And she said, you know, don't have your shelves be I don't know, like five or six feet tall, like eye level, and then, you know, you can absolutely read a cover better than you can read the spine. Mm -hmm. And uh, maybe label your books by genre, and so people know right away, you know, whether it's a Christian or a mystery or something. Um, kind of route your displays, too, she brought in, and so I'm looking forward to having the space to do something like that one of these days. Um, Engaging Your Community was another one that I went to um, by Building Library Awareness by Jennifer Powell. Uh, they did a lot of uh, Get Your Geek, and I think it sounds like an incredible promotion for your library and advocacy uh, to market, decorate, advocate. Um, I'm not sure I can commit to that right now, but I thought it was a great idea. As you know, we're busy doing fundraisers and this is the end of the uh, fourth quarter for grants and things like that, so I know people are busy everywhere. Um, what else did we do? I enjoyed Chris Ripple's Excel at Rearranging. I did that one because, of course, you know, with the new library, I'm looking for ideas. Um, the firm that we're using doesn't have a lot of experience with libraries, but a lot of experience with buildings. And so he helped a lot with... Um, showing how to use Excel to kind of design your own little floor plant. Mm -hmm. um, I have yet to work on that. I'm not that great mm -hmm. <laughs> at it. Um, but like he said, make a path, you know, for people to view things as they come through your library. And then put some of your more important things toward the back. You know, those are just a few things that I've learned um, with this incredible, incredible conference. I'm looking forward to going again. Um, if it's ever in Nebraska again, that would be great. It's something that I can say with the scholarship that um, was granted, I would not have been able to attend at all without it. Um, that is something that we just couldn't work into our budget and myself personally could not have afforded. So. The fact that that scholarship was granted to me 
provided a huge service, not just for me, but for the library, for the community, um, because I did learn a lot. Um, I'm looking forward to just doing more conferences in the future. Um, I don't know how much you want to know, because I could go on forever. I've been known to talk. <laughs> well, you know, we, we make these grants available to people um, because we think that it does help improve library service in the end. Um, Absolutely. It gives people ideas. Uh, it gives people a chance to network. Um, so really we're not, it's not that we're not nice people, but I mean we're not doing this out of the goodness of our hearts. We're doing it because we think it's useful and worthwhile mm -hmm. and does pay off. Well, I uh, hate to tell you, you guys are nice people. <laughs> Without the Nebraska Library Commission, there are so many things that uh, small and rural libraries would not be able to accomplish. And to have you guys there, I hate to say this, basically at our beck and call, because mm -hmm. I know Krista, I'm on the phone with her a lot. <laughs> That's okay. It's, That's my job. <laughs> it's wonderful. It's a wonderful service, and I can say you guys, yeah, like you said, it is a huge thing for the libraries. Well, that's good. I'm I'm glad you had a good conference. I'm, you I know, did. I know like you said, too, networking. I met so mm -hmm. many wonderful people out there that um, we exchanged emails so I can ask okay. questions. And, you know, just having that kind of support as well as the NLC is, it's phenomenal to me. I'm very blessed in this library, and I'm sure all the libraries in Nebraska feel the same way. Well, that's great. <laughs> Well, Thanks. thank you very much. Okay. Um, yeah, well, so, you're welcome. Yeah, you can stay on the line. We might have some more questions and things yeah. for you later, if that's cool. I, oh. I will stay on the line. Thank okay, you. Thanks. And now I think we'd like to go uh, hear from Kirsten, if we can. Hi, Kirsten. Hi, guys. Hello. Good morning. So how was your conference experience? Now, you commuted, right? I did. And I have to echo pretty much what has been said before. Um, I was really, when you talked about the resources being shared after the conference, that was in my notes to talk about. Mm -hmm. Because as we all know, when you're balancing a notebook on your knees in a crowded room trying to write down everything frantically, <laughs> yeah. you sometimes get back and think, I have no idea what that word was. So hi, the one that I came away with the most was the Family Read with Heidi Schuett mm -hmm. from Minnesota, and she was just phenomenal. And, but I came back and promptly emailed her a whole list of questions, and she emailed me right back and said, please keep in touch if there's anything else, and sent me my own separate email with the slides on it, so I didn't even have to go back to the website to pull it up. Oh, and great. I've, you know, I've said it before, I'll say it again, the generosity in our profession is, there's no words for it. If you want an idea, if they want, you know, if they share an idea, they give you the whole idea. They don't just say, here's what, what I did, good luck. <laughs> you know, they mm -hmm. detail it. They, and there's never a question of, you can use it, you cannot, you know, they're like, take it. So anyway, as a, with the as the same with the NLA conference, I always come away thinking, "Gosh, people are way smarter than I am, <laughs> <laughs> and much more original." <laughs> but I talked to our other staff members that went and got some notes, and the dazzling displays was one that two of our staff members went to. And they were both just blown away with it. And they said it was really, really helpful and really well done. Um, Karen, my director, referenced both of the authors and said they were amazing, that they were really well done. Um, although we both agreed, she and I both thought we would have liked more breakout sessions mm -hmm. and maybe a little shorter keynote time because we, we wanted more time to network with people. Mm -hmm. um, not a criticism, just a, you know, I thought Mary Stenger was really fun. 
but the word that I wrote down when I was thinking about her was bravado. And I just, I respected her just going in and, and taking charge and making it what her people needed, not just what the board thought she should be doing, or even the city or the town. Um, Mary is the director of the best small library in America, right? Yes. Yes. Thank you for clarifying that. Exactly. Um, and again, thank you for the grant. It was fab. It was just a great experience. And it, the other note that I made to myself when I came back was it's always so refreshing or um, I can't think of the word I'm looking for right now, but to hear the common ground. When you work in a small library, sometimes it feels like I'm the only one who only has two people show up for a program that I've worked three weeks on. Or we're the only ones that, you know, my story time numbers are dropping. And I go to these conferences and when people are kind enough to be honest and say, we tried this, this is where we came out, it wasn't as successful as we hoped, but this is what part of it worked, it kind of gives you the thought that, oh, okay, I'm not the only one. Does that make sense? Yes. Does, do you, is that concept coming, do you understand what I'm trying to say? Well, I, I think you, you do, you get uh, reinforcement, mm -hmm. um, but you also get encouragement and, um, um, what's the word I'm trying to find? I know. Inspiration. It, it, inspiration, that's a better word, yeah. <laughs> inspiration, that's exactly it. And I'm, I just appreciate the honesty of people when they say, here's the best part of the program, here's the part that we would change. And with Heidi Schuett, mm -hmm. she mm -hmm. went to the seven uh, library regions that participated in the Family Read program and said to them, tell me what worked, tell me what didn't work. And they were all very honest. We would change the time frame, we would do this differently, we would, and that was really, really helpful to someone like me who's a one-woman band to kind of know where to start and where not to start. But um, anyway, but it was just, it was really interesting. The other one that I really enjoyed that kind of surprised me was the laughter workshop. Mm, yeah. Which was the last session on Thursday. And it was really, really interesting and I thought a really um, fun outreach the presenter, I'm sorry, whose name has completely escaped me, talked about taking it to senior centers. And mm -hmm. I thought, what a great thing to do to do the intergenerational outreach, because we do a lot of outreach here with, um, with the daycare centers, and I read at our Head Start Center or whatever. And sometimes we kind of forget that piece of the puzzle. And I just thought it was really, really a cool, practical idea. The laughter for the health of it? Yes, exactly. Okay. Exactly. We have a handout online here. Yeah, yeah. And she had some, and she was really concrete about how it worked and how you could put it into practice. So, mm -hmm. but those are pretty much my notes. Is there anything else you'd like me to cover, or is there anything I left out? Well, we really were interested in just in your experience. Did you feel that um, a couple of your colleagues went too? Did they have the same kind of experience? They did. They did. And we all talked to each other before when we were talking about participating in this. And unfortunately, the two of the others were supposed to be here with me today, but because of scheduling things, yeah. it's just me. Mm -hmm. um, but we all agreed on the same things, the networking, the diversity of the programs that were offered was really helpful because we could all go to different sessions and then come back together mm -hmm. and have things to share that we could all apply here when we came back to work. So the other session I want to mention that I went to that was really helpful was the Makers, Mentors, and More uh -huh. because they defined STEM and STEAM and those ter terms which I kind of read about but they made it very easy to understand and I found out why the Lego Club which I funded with a grant from the Library Commission 
two years ago is so um, spot on for right now, even if I, even just the fact that we put our Legos out all the time and kids just come in and just know where they are now. So thank mm -hmm. you for that too. And I, I echo everybody else without the commission. I don't know. <laughs> I'd be lost. So you guys do an amazing job. Thank you. Well, Enjoy. thank you. <laughs> um, but, you know, we, we think the librarians do amazing jobs mm -hmm. and that this is the kind of thing that helps them. Um, and so, you know, it, it was it was a good way to spend the money. We felt that Absolutely. we really were going to get a return here in terms of the services that would be provided to people. Um, so it was not totally just, you know, a, a a gracious gesture. It 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 was an investment. Mm -hmm. Okay. Exactly. Invested. Because there's no way we would have been able to take four of us on our own, yeah. and that mm -hmm. was just you know it was just huge. So, well, that's thank good. you again. But no, that's great. I'm glad that you know you you feel, and we'll we'll look for some of your good displays. Um, <laughs> We have one up now, as a matter of fact, or okay. a couple, well, actually. You need to take pictures, and we need to get them up on Pinterest. Ah, that's, yeah, that them. seems to be where people are sharing their uh, display ideas, is on Pinterest. So we'll be looking okay. for that. We will start doing that. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Okay, great. Well, well, that's Lauren great. Um, Lauren is up next. If Kirsten, you're... Hi. Okay. Thank Hi, you. Lauren. And here's your, your library website. Um, how you doing? I am doing fine. It's been fun listening to all of this. <laughs> so how was your experience at the ARS? It was amazing. Mm -hmm. I want to thank you guys so much for the grant funds. Um, I've been a member of ARC for a couple years now and oh. was really excited, like you were, to hear that the conference would be so close this year. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. But then I started to worry about you know, with a conference that's just tailored to libraries our size, how how was I going to get to all the sessions? <laughs> so with the, the grant funds, we were able to stretch our budget so that we could send three members of our staff. So that was amazing. Good. Uh, we love the keynote speakers. And like everyone, the ability to visit with librarians in a, a sit-down situation is just great. You get so much information that way. Mm -hmm. um, there were two sessions that I want to mention, but first I want to say I think it's interesting that everyone has picked different sessions. Yeah. And and you guys didn't prompt me about what sessions to talk about, so I'm sure you didn't prompt anyone else. No, so we didn't. I, I we didn't have really a clue about what was going to be talked about. <laughs> <laughs> um, the first one I wanted to mention was the superhero leadership. Uh -huh. uh, with Lisa Lewis from Arizona. Uh, she compared the work of supervisors or library supervisors to various superheroes in their traits, um, oh, she's not both good ones and bad ones. Mm. Uh, some of the traits included sense of purpose or fairness, <coughs> or insecurity. Um, that's one of my favorites. Mm -hmm. uh, conviction, lightheartedness. Um, but I think my favorite one that she talked about was courage. Uh, she had it broken out into three different types. The courage to try, the courage to trust, and the courage to tell or to speak out. Um, there was so much good information and I'm working on tweaking you did. to a staff in service of uh, superhero librarians, uh, translating these traits into how we interact with our public. So that one I'm looking forward to making some good use of here in our own facility. Uh, the second one I really was impressed with, with was uh, small libraries can make a big impact with Joan Weaver of Kansas. Um, if anyone went there, I, I can't imagine you wouldn't agree that this lady is just amazing. Um, we had tried to do some oral histories in the past with the StoryCorps program. And it didn't turn out as well as we had hoped. In listening to this presentation, 
I discovered it was because we had done virtually everything the wrong way. Uh, I can't begin to list all the information she gave us, but I would really recommend that everyone visit the Kinsley Library website. And I, I think she has, yeah, there are handouts there on the screen. Take a look at this program. It is just amazing. And the, the other thing I wanted to mention that there was one quote that came out of the whole conference that I really liked um, and is just perfect for dealing with our fellow staff and with our patrons and with our constituents out in the town. Uh, it says, treat every day as a job interview. And I think that just says it all. Unmuted. Wow, that's Do we yeah. Get lost? So, you say you spent a couple of staff members. Um, have you, you know, did the three of you have similar experiences, or did oh, you yeah. do different things? <laughs> Yeah, at the end of every day, we just sat in a, our mot hotel room and, and babbled about the sessions we had gone to. Um, we kept tripping over each other in trying to share the information we gleaned. It was just great, and then the whole drive home, we were talking about it. Um, we're really going to try and, and work this into our budget so that we can go every you know, two or three years to one of these, because um, it is just amazing. Well, that's great. Um, you you talk, You mentioned your hotel room. Nobody else has really said anything about the hotel so far. <laughs> I thought the facility was very nice. That it was a, a it was nice to have it all right there together. Um, and yeah. I thought the food was good. Did yes. You, mm -hmm. Yeah, we thought so too. Our only complaint about the facility, and we all three agreed on this, is that it was really an uncomfortable setup for the vendors. Mm. Yes. They were in a hallway that was maybe a little bit narrow. Mm -hmm. Yes. I think if they yeah. had been able to have a space that was like one of the meeting rooms designated to them, that might have made it easier. I mean, I get the fact that people are constantly walking by them, so they have to maybe get more of a chance to interact, but it did make it awkward to get through the hallways and to get to places. Yes, very much so. On the other hand, sometimes crowds are, um, they, ha they have an excitement, they have an energy in them. True. There was a um, lot of that definitely at this conference. I would yeah. Say. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah, everyone seemed to be having a wonderful time. Yeah. And was just I excited have, about the whole event. I had that impression. And I hope people, um, a lot of people, went, several people said to me that, oh, Omaha was so nice. <laughs> Surprise. <laughs> And um, I was glad they thought so. <laughs> but uh, well, I you know I, I I think it's neat that people um, did get things out of it, and that you know I I think we're going to see some of this stuff put in practice here. So it will be yeah, like the the little ripples, you know, in a pond, moving out from it. So, I think it'd be interesting to do the same sort of thing six months from now and see what has changed in the different libraries. Oh, do a follow-up? Uh, yeah, okay, follow then up. six months from now, all of you guys will be contacting you to give us an update yeah, never. <laughs> on what you've done. Well, okay. we'll, we'll see. Pressure's on. <laughs> but <clears throat> really, you know, we do love to see uh, pictures um, and you know displays. Now Pinterest mm -hmm. seems to be the place where people are putting pictures of their displays. But we love to see pictures of your um, of your your um, programs and things on your websites or uh, in the um, system newsletters. You blog know about it. A lot of, I know a lot of these libraries websites have blogs right built into them. So we'll see yeah. posts about what what you've done. Yeah, we we think that's very cool and. Uh, we're glad that you, we're glad you went, and um, we appreciate the the work you're doing there. So thank you very much. Uh, well, and while I still have the phone, I want to mm -hmm. thank you also from everyone here in Wayne for all you do for the libraries. Um, we we feel real blessed right now that we're still standing. Yes, 
Mm -hmm. and, oh, we're glad you are too. Yeah. But it, we think our library is what it is in great part because of the support we've had from the commission over the years. Well, thank you. That's very yeah. nice of you. We're happy to help. Yeah. We're, you know, we're glad to help. We, it is a, a point in trying to get, I mean, the reason we all do this is so that we can provide good library service to the library users in Nebraska, to the people of Nebraska. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, it's important, I guess, not to forget them ever. Um, but we're really glad that you had a good conference and thank you for um, sharing with us today. Okay. Now, You're welcome. And Dave? So do we have time. Dave? Are you there, Dave? Yes. Hi. Yes, there you are. Hi, Dave. So how was your conference experience? <laughs> well, I wasn't a scholarship person for the fact that I was a presenter. And yeah. so that's the thing I'd like to also to recommend to people out there that if you have an idea, put in a suggestion, you get your way paid for free. Mm -hmm. And so that's how we could afford to go. Um, and uh, then I also got involved in the planning committee and helped do things there. So, yeah. I mean, for me, that was a really worthwhile conference because I learned kind of some of that stuff that I've never been involved in before. And the other thing is that I found so impressive. I've been to ALA and PLA. And uh -huh. all the time I'm sitting in there, I keep thinking, boy, we just don't have the funds to do any of those kind of programs that they're talking about. They, they explain their marketing budget. That's our whole book budget. Mm -hmm. You know, little things like that. And this one, the very first session I heard, I thought, yeah, we could actually do that literally in a month. We could get that started. Mm -hmm. It would cost us hardly anything at all. And every single thing that came up, it was something that we could actually do right then and there. And at this conference, I actually felt like we were one of the big, huge libraries compared to everybody else because I kept running into the one-person or the three-person libraries. Mm -hmm. and, but every now and then, there was a city with 25,000 population that had a lot of staff, and they were doing a lot of variety of programs, too. So that's the kind of thing that I really felt more comfortable at than at ALA or PLA. So. Yes, that was, I think, one of the exciting things about this conference is it really um, aimed at so many of the libraries in Nebraska, that it was about small and rural, and these are people who understand the situation of the small library. Right. I mean, I, it's probably 90 to 95 percent of our libraries in Nebraska are all in that category. Oh, yeah. And these are programs that you can just literally walk into with literally no funds at all or just very minimal type funds like the um, keeping records, the DVD or the videos of the people, the historical perspectives, the military veterans mm -hmm. and that. Mm -hmm. We've actually turned that over to one of our staff who is completing his master's, is looking at academic work. And so mm -hmm. that's going to be his kind of assignment because that's a nice tie-in to his background in history. And so that's his little thing that he's going to run with right now. So, and then when I came back, I gave the suggestion to our children's library. And this is what this library in Arizona is doing for videos for their kids. Mm -hmm. And then at the Nebraska Library Conference with the um, library there that was doing their tab programs, I gave them some ideas on different things like that. So that's the thing I like picking up at these smaller size library conferences because they are things that we can use right away. Mm -hmm. Well, you so presented. They, how was your presenting? How was the experience of presenting there? It went really pretty well. Um, lot like she said from Wayne, my only real complaint was it with the vendors, as crowded as it was out there, and then if they were sitting right next to your room, you could actually hear them through the doors at times. Oh. Mm. And so there was a couple times I would, as a room monitor there, I would get up and kind of open the door and just kind of down a little bit and mm. uh, go back in. But for the presentation part, I don't get tongue-tied when I'm doing those types of things. I can kind of handle doing those. Yeah. And so it went really pretty well. And what was interesting is that 
like in my presentation, I did the seed saving one. Yeah. And there was probably 45 to 46 people in there. Everybody walked away with seeds. Everybody got something. They got handouts. Mm -hmm. um, I've had comments back. I've actually sent seeds out to other libraries in the United States that they weren't able to be at this one for some reason. They were at another one, and they were interested in getting more information on it. So it, it's just kind of that nice little networking type of thing. Because every time I sat down at a meal, I was with somebody else from another table or country or a country state or yeah. something like that. Yeah. I felt that that was very, um, very comfortable, too. I tried to sit with different people um, at the different mm -hmm. meals. And um, some conferences, maybe you wouldn't feel okay about sitting, just walking up to a table of people you Strangers. didn't know. Mm -hmm. But this one, for some reason, I, I felt fine about it and met a lot of neat people that way. Well, when you sit down at a table and you start talking about a program, you say, well, yeah, we only had three people show up for that. Yeah. And they're going, oh, geez, that would be great to get three people to show up for a program. Yeah. We only had two. And, you know, and for those very small libraries that only have 600, us with 13,000, we have programs that nobody comes to or one or two people come to. And we just keep, as I call it, keep trying. We keep, keep shooting enough times in that barrel and some fish is going to finally <laughs> yeah. close to the surface. So. Mm -hmm. Well, that's great. I'm glad that you had a, a good experience um, and that, you know, you feel you, you got some things that you brought back, <clears throat> but it seems like the I'm networking was really important to you. I'm sorry, talked over you. I, I'm already making plans for next year. I've already got it done on the schedule. I'm already thinking of program ideas possibly to put in for a potential, you know, presentation again. So at least then I would get my pay way paid again. So you'd like to encourage people to go ahead and present at the conferences? Yep, and I could see, especially these really small libraries, get a group of people together that you're all that same size type thing, and what are those problems that you're always running into? Look at those types of things, and how do you work together as a group you know, to be able to do some of this thing? Some of the things I'd like to see down the road is a cooperative buying effort through a bunch of libraries. Yeah. And so you can only afford to buy one or two things, you're going to have to pay a higher price, but if 40 libraries want to buy the same thing, you can get it at a discount. Well. Good example is Overdrive. Yes. Well, you know, so you felt that the, um, the, 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 um, Talking with other libraries is really important at the conference. Yeah, because it really opens up your eyes to see that, you know, you've tried this or you're thinking of trying this, but you don't quite know how to pull it off. You mm -hmm. know, when you're a one-person library, how do you get things done with programming and things like that? You know, how do you get all those jobs done? And yeah. we rely on volunteers for some of our programs here. Yeah. You know, we're lucky enough we have 10 staff. And one yeah. of my requirements for our staff is everybody has to think of a potential program that they can do, mm -hmm. and then we find a time to fit it into the schedule. Mm -hmm. And we have two or three staff that their program, they normally work daytime hours, but their program would probably only work at night, so we actually pay them to come in and get a couple extra hours to do that program at night. Then. Well, that's great. Well, thank you, Dave. I, you know, I'm, I'm glad that everybody seemed to have a really good experience with the ARSL conference, and they're ready to go out and do it again, and they would encourage other people to do it. So thank you very much. You know, we're, um, I'm going to talk a little bit about the Continuing Education Grant, if we can, mm -hmm. and then yep. we'll be able to round off this program today. I do have just one comment that did come in during when Dave was talking for Nebraska people. Um, Brian Moss, who's at our Eastern Library System, had just commented, he's looking forward to seeing you, Dave, and everyone at the NLA conference, which will actually be next year in South Sioux City. We're going up to yeah. the eastern part of the state for our state conference. I agree, yes. Should yeah, that's going to be fun. Gonna be fun. <laughs> um, about the continuing education and training grants, because that, yes, that's kind of what this 
program has been about the people who got the grants to go to the conference. Um, we do make continuing education and training grants. Well, we have made continuing education and training grants every year. Um, this is usually state money. Sometimes there's some federal money involved. And as you know, um, it always does, things always do depend on, you know, whether we get funded, whether we can then fund these programs we have. But we think this program is important because we think the continuing education is one of the ways that librarians can improve their, um, their skills, which then helps them improve their services to the people that they're serving. And that's really the bottom line. Um, as I said, this is not charity. This is not really totally out of the goodness of our hearts. It's because we're making an investment in the librarians and um, in their skill levels. Uh, we try to make the grants <clears throat> easy, fairly easy to apply for. Um, this one, uh, and <clears throat> Right now, there's no. Uh, we'll have the schedule out soon for next year for the grants. Um, there were directions, um, and you know, we we tried to write out exactly. I tried to make it really clear what it would cover, what it wouldn't cover, because I didn't want there to be any surprises for people. I wanted people to know exactly what was going to happen. Um, and this, of course, was all for one event. Very often, um, our CE grants will be for either going to a conference or doing a continuing education program at your library. For instance, if you all had some, if everyone at your library had some skills they wanted to learn more about and you had a, a speaker or a, a teacher at your library for a particular program. Um, the year before, we have uh, funded um, an in-service day at, at Lincoln City Libraries, for instance. We're going to have an uh, Encompass Live about that because that was yes. a very interesting program. So these are the kinds of things that we will fund. Um, we try to have the schedule out so you know when you can apply for the grants. Um, we try to make the uh, guidelines pretty clear. Um, we have not really had any upper level of how big a grant we would make. Um, on the other hand, most of the grants have not been huge. Uh, you know, maybe a thousand dollars or so. Um, and the idea is just if this is something that's going to improve skills. What do we look for when we're looking at grant applications? And let me just say that we think that the, simply the uh, process of applying for a grant is maybe an educational experience for some people. Um, and the CE grants are very easy grants to apply for. Um, more and more as libraries want to do things and don't have funding, they are applying for grants to a lot of different places. And writing grants is a skill, like anything. You, you learn how to do it. And this is a great place to start. You will never get a more sympathetic reading of a grant proposal than you will if you send in a proposal to the Nebraska Library Commission. In fact, if you want to send in a proposal <clears throat> and ask us to read it and tell you, you know, how you could strengthen your proposal. We will do that for you. Um, <clears throat> but what do we really look for? Well, in this case, I looked for, were people really going to go to this conference and get something out of it? Um, generally, what we look for is, do people have a good, viable idea and have they shown us that they really have a plan that it looks like they have a really good shot at carrying through on their idea? That's what we're really looking for in the grant. Um, sometimes that means that we really want people to understand 
uh, what all the expenses will be and really give us a good budget. Sometimes that means that uh, we want to know that people really have a good grasp of what all the steps in the project will be and how and who's going to be in charge of them and what order they have to get done in and that they have a reasonable schedule to finish it. Um, that kind of thing. That's what we're looking for in a grant proposal. Um, and we, we do try to make grants. We also, of course, make grants for um, services to children and youth. And we have sometimes made grants for library development. Uh, again, it does depend on whether we get funding for our grants. Um, but we do like to see the libraries um, come up with their own ideas and um, uh, be able to carry them out. So, I don't know if anybody has any questions about grants at any time. They can give me a call, um, send me an email. Uh, we're happy to talk to you about them. I'm glad this worked out for everybody. Um, I want to thank the Association of Rural and Small Libraries for coming to Omaha. Um, and I hope that Omaha was good to them. I think it was. <laughs> and um, I just think this is a great organization that we do want to support if we can and try to get people to the conferences because uh, they are so worthwhile for so many of the librarians in Nebraska. Next year's ARSL meeting is going to be in Tacoma, Washington, mm -hmm. which, yeah, that's a bit of a stretch for travel for some of us, but we'll see what we could do. But you could still apply for one of our grants and see if yes, you can get you some of your funding um, through us, yeah, to go there. Mm -hmm. And we hope that having heard that some people had very successful um, conference experiences, that you can then go and show your funders why this would be a good thing for you to be able to do. Mm -hmm. So... What have any questions? Else? No, but we have a comment. Um, Tina Hansen, who is actually the current president of ARSL, is on with us right now. She's here. Um, oh, and she just has typed in and said, thanks for allowing me to be a fly on the wall today. We're glad to have you. Um, happy to have everyone come. Um, glad to hear each of your person's reflections on their experience and hope to see many of you at future ARSL conferences, which we were just hoping would happen. Yeah. yeah. Um, and thanks to all of us for their assistance. Yes, we did um, the commission, since this was kind of on the border of Iowa and Nebraska, there was help from both sides, the State Library of Iowa and the Library Commission here helping to do certain things to get the conference going as well. And we were happy to help, of course, since they were here yeah. in our home state. And so let's all look forward to next year. Yes. <laughs> okay. So thanks to everybody. Thanks to Abby and Cindy and uh, Kirsten and Lauren and Dave. <laughs> I got the list. Thanks. <laughs> don't forget anyone. <laughs> no, I don't want to forget anyone. And uh, we hope that um, you all had a um, interesting... Pro and do look at the ARSL website for the handouts mm -hmm. from... Yeah, if um, you didn't get to attend the session. I know some of the sessions people mentioned I did attend, mm -hmm. but I heard about a lot of other ones, too, that seemed to be very, very popular. And that yeah. A lot of good um, info that people were, as I forget one of the person said, I wanted to go to everything, and I couldn't. Yeah. And how am I supposed to do that? <laughs> Listen, you know, one of the most fascinating things I went to was the one on model rocketry, which, you know, <laughs> it's not really my bag, but, but it's fun. And it was it was how this person, this man had put together this really um, amazing program, I thought was just a great story and really an interesting uh, session. So thanks mm -hmm. to everybody. Yes. And good, good. um I guess that's it for today. Okay, yeah. Thank you, everyone, for attending. Um, just type in Encompass Live. Just Google Encompass Live, yeah, and it'll bring it up. Um, so thank you, everyone, for attending and hearing all about um, ARSL this morning. Um, that will wrap it up for today. The show has been recorded, as usual. So you will be able to watch the recording afterwards um, if you want to or share it with any of your colleagues who couldn't make it today, just like going to conference. If you couldn't make it right now, you can watch the recording. So that will wrap it up for today, but I hope you'll join us next week when, and this was mentioned by Abby or Cindy, I forget, mm -hmm. we will have online with us next week 
Um, Mary, St Mary Beth Stanger, who is the director of the Southern Area Public Library, this year's library journal, small, um, best it's small cool. library in America. <laughs> Can't get yeah. the idea. So she will be um, with us next week. So um, if you weren't able to see her speak at ARSL, she will be here on a couple slides for the hour. Cool. Talking about um, how they pulled it off, how the cool things they're doing up there. They are a very, very small library in a very, very small town. It says here their community has 498 populations. So... Um, we're talking small, yeah. So I hope you join us next week for um, that show. You can register right there on our website. Um, what is that again? I was in here, okay. Uh, and if you are a Facebook user, please do um, like us on Facebook. And Compass Live does have a Facebook page, and we do post onto there. Um, when we have new shows coming up, reminders of when a show is starting, like this morning I posted and said join us right now. People can come in and just on the fly and join. And when our recordings are available, we post them on here as well so that you can find out when they are ready to go. So uh, thank you very much for attending, and hopefully we will see you next week on Encompass Live. Get back to our meeting. Bye. Thank you very much, and bye-bye.